big announcement today for all SUNY students. A system-wide policy is going to require all on-campus students to test negative for COVID-19 in the 10 days before leaving before Thanksgiving break. Talk a little bit more about it. We're happy to have the SUNY Chancellor, Dr. Jim Malatris, with us live tonight. Thanks for being with us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Um, so to test all those students, you probably have the exact count, but I'm just going to say that's a lot of tests. I mean, how is this going to work? How are you going to get all that done across all these campuses? It's about 140,000 students, and we're going to get this done because we have SUNY Upstate Medical University, which has come up with the state-of-the-art saliva test, where we can already do about 120,000 tests a week. They're ramping up to 200,000 tests a week, so we have ample tests. Our students have been great through the course of this semester of getting regularly tested. So this is just another step in our process of trying to control the virus. But why specifically put this policy into effect if they're all going home? This because we are good community uh, citizens here. We've noticed an uptick in cases from the, uh, the CDC has mentioned they're coming from smaller gatherings, families seeing one another. They just warned about actually Thanksgiving being one of those center pieces which could create more of the viral spread. So we would just want to assure our families where we have students all across the state that when they come home, they are protected, they're protecting you, they're testing negative. So we don't want any of our students to go back into their homes or back into their communities potentially positive. Our students love the testing because they can be assured that they're not going to go home and infect their grandparents, what they're going to see on Thanksgiving or their family members. So this is just an extra layer of assurance, especially as cases continue to arise, not only in New York State, but across the nation. Let's take it two ways. So let's say you do test positive. Um, you may even be asymptomatic, asymptomatic. So I'm guessing you have to stay on campus, likely wouldn't be able to go home for Thanksgiving. It's how it works now, right? So that rule hasn't changed. It's a public health order where you have to quarantine or isolate for 14 days. What we're saying is for students who don't have an alternative, stay on campus. And what our policy did today was mandate that campuses provide the needed services to our students. They have a space to stay, they have meals, all of those things will be taken care of for those students so they don't have to feel the extra burden of that. But if the local health department says you can go home, you can do it safely, you can be quarantined safely, those options exist too. We just want public health experts to be part of that, which is the rule now, right? Our students mm -hmm. have been quarantined across the system over the course of the semester. Our faculty have been quarantined because they have, we've had, we've had have uh, positive cases. So this is nothing new. We just want to do it in an orderly way so there's no surprises for any of our uh, SUNY family. How do you make sure though that a student isn't leaving campus without having that negative test done? I'll say this, there's been a lot of cynicism towards our students uh, because you've seen the bad stories on the news about COVID on campuses. The great thing is we've done 270,000 tests already on our SUNY campuses in the last month and a half, 0.5% positive. That's a great rate. Our students are a lot to do with that because they're doing the right things, wearing their masks and socially distancing and not doing the things that can create a viral spread. Our students have already been tested every other week, basically. They're doing this. So there are always, a, of course, a couple of students or a handful of students that don't comply. And we have a fairly significant policy in place, a uniform compliance document, which has uh -huh. pretty significant penalties for failure to comply. But that's been a minority of our students. Most are complying. Most want to protect their families. Most want to protect their loved ones. They've been doing the right thing. They should be applauded for their actions over the last semester. What would you say to families, or parents uh, out there who say, Heck, I'm worried that my child might not be home for Thanksgiving. So come home this weekend. Don't even worry about all this testing. What, what would you say to them? We'll worry about the next semester and finishing the semester from home. We can do it remote, right? What would you say to them? What I say is we're all in this together. And people have to go to work every day, and they have to take extra precaution. People go to school, and they have to take extra precaution. We're just in this current environment where COVID still exists. You're seeing upticks everywhere. We all have a responsibility to one another. Our students have a responsibility to their families. Their families have a responsibility to their loved ones. And we just want to do the right thing. So I think what you've been seeing, our students are showing up for the testing every week because it's the right thing to do. They, I think on a whole, our students have a, a moral imperative. They have a moral responsibility. They feel it, they understand it. Let's just make sure that we're negative just so we're not passing it because what we often hear is, well, we don't get sick. But what I think students are coming to understand is if you go home and you are asymptomatic and you do spread it to your loved one who is um, potentially has a, a, a another health condition that could result in COVID killing them or an older loved one, they don't want to do that to their loved ones. So we're all in this together. We're looking at it as a community. 
We're there for our communities. The community has been there for our colleges all across the system for this past semester and a half because it's been difficult on our students. So I think on a whole, you're going to see people do the right thing like they've been doing because, quite frankly, we're still in the middle of a crisis. You have to manage the crisis. Let me see if I can sneak one more in before I let you go here. SUNY Cortland, they are in their second uh, two-week pause. How are things looking down there now? Right now, they have 18 cases out of the 100 threshold that you have to get to. So their numbers have come down. It was about 6.5% when we had to take the pause, it's down to about 2% positivity rate. I think there's still more work to be done, but we've seen other success stories. You've seen SUNY Oswego take a pause, mm -hmm. they had to mitigate, and they reopened. You've seen Binghamton University do the same yeah. thing. I'm hopeful that Portland can reopen too, but there's still some ways to go uh, to see if we can get there. Dr. Jim Malatris, the SUNY Chancellor, can't thank you enough for being with us live tonight and answering all those questions. Really appreciate it. Great info. Thanks. Have a good night. All righty. Thank you. Christy.